Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another great episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, in studio with co-host Jay Dash. We're going to talk some bucko baseball, talk about the September rotation, a little bit about the September call-ups, and hopefully the Pirates will be a little smarter than last year and set up their rotation for the playoff series and not let freaking Edison Volquez pitch. I have no problem with Edison <laughs> Volquez pitching, man. He was the only guy that started the entire season from beginning to end pitching very well. Everybody else had injuries, had bad starts for lengthy periods of time. You remember Liriano to start the season, he looked terrible in the first month or so, and then he turned it around. But, yeah, let's take a look at this rotation moving into September because because there's a great chance that it's not going to look like it did so far this season. I mean, Garrett Cole's going to be there. He has a 2.44 ERA. He's 15-7 and seven now, got his 15th win yesterday at Miami. He went seven and a third innings pitched, allowed five hits, one earned run, no walks with four Ks and a 2-1 win. But he went five straight starts without a win. And his previous start, though, I mean, he was pitching well versus San Francisco, seven innings pitched, three hits, one unearned run, three walks and eight Ks and a Bucks 3-2 win. He did not come out with the decision. But Garrett Cole looks fine right now. He's still your ace. And yeah, you're right. If they have to play in that wild card game it will be Garrett Cole this season because they do have a bona fide ace now and that is Garrett Cole and then you got Francisco Liriano he's nine and six with a 323 ERA his last start versus San Francisco five and a third innings pitch seven hits two unearned runs three walks and five Ks the Bucks are actually 10 and 0 in his last 10 starts though so they're playing winning baseball when Francisco Liriano is on the mound. He's Cuban. They're afraid if they lose, he'll shank one of them in the locker room. But he's pitching tonight versus Colorado, so I see the Pirates have a good chance to win that game. And then J.A. Happ, he has moved into the third spot in this rotation, if you ask me. He he, he has been their third best starter recently. A couple good outings in a row here now after yeah, his first miserable start. Yeah, he made four starts with the Pirates so far since coming over at the deadline from Seattle. His first start, four and a third innings pitch, nine hits, four and runs, two walks with six Ks, and a five nothing loss versus Chicago. But over his last three starts, two and zero with seventeen and a third innings pitch, thirteen hits, one earned run, four walks, and sixteen Ks. The Bucks are actually three and zero in those games as well. So J. A. Happ is definitely a part of this rotation moving forward until he shows this isn't for real. Now, if he falls apart, something might happen and he might fall out of the rotation. But right now, he looks like a guy that. At least you want to be your number four starting pitcher heading into the playoffs. If you have to start a number four pitcher, Jay Happ doesn't sound like a bad guy at this point. Not if he keeps pitching like this. He's lost. He's got rid of the just awful label. <laughs> yeah, for real. Charlie Morton, he is still your number four right now. He's eight and five, whoa, a whoa. 420 ERA, a 130 WHIP, in 102 thirds innings pitched. He's allowed 101 hits. He's kept the ball in the ballpark pretty well. Nine he home runs. He does good. 30 walks allowed compared to 74 Ks isn't bad either. And look, he's even got better in the home run department. Two home runs allowed over his last 36 innings pitched. His last start, it wasn't his best start. Five and a third innings pitched, eight <laughs> hits, four in runs with no walks and three Ks at Miami. He was actually pitching well, but then got lit up there going into the sixth inning or whatnot. But his previous start, six and two thirds innings pitched, four hits, no earned runs, two walks and eight Ks versus San Francisco. You're hoping things work out as you head into the playoffs. Charlie Morton would be your fifth starter and really wouldn't pitch in the playoffs because your fifth starter most likely isn't going to pitch in any game in the playoffs. But if he is your fourth starter and has to pitch one game, it's not the end of the world either. But right now, Jeff Locke has been their fifth starter, obviously, for most of the season. And there's a lot of talk that he might have made his last start. His next start is September 1st when rosters expand so they could actually put in Vance Worley or Rodimus Lees, give them a shot and take Locke out of this rotation and see if they can find another starter before A.J. Burnett comes back. And we'll have to see what happens with him as well. But Jeff Locke, I want to talk about him for a second because his season probably is about over. So I want to go over what he's done Thank this season. Thank the Lord. Listen, he's not as bad as you think, man. I'm going to go over some numbers here. He's 7-8 and eight with a 446 ERA, a 142 whip, and 141 and a third innings pitched. He's allowed 148 hits. He's kept the ball in the ballpark as well with 14 home runs. But 
Too many walks. 52 walks compared to 105 Ks, and those are 141.1 innings. His last start, though, he pitched very well. Uh, granted, against Miami. Seven innings pitched, five hits, two earned runs, one home run, a walk, and three Ks, and a 7-2 win against Miami, like I was saying. So he pitched very well in his last start. The Bucks, they're actually 14-11 and 11 in his 25 starts this season and 9-5 and five in his last 14 starts. Now look at this. They're 7-6 and six in division games when he starts. When the rest of the rotation starts, they're 14-23. and 23. Yeah, Cole doesn't know how to beat uh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, so he, he's not helping out in that department. Well, he didn't take 23 losses there, I tell you that. But... Look, he's allowed two earned runs or less 11 times. The Bucs, they're 9-2 and two in those games. He was definitely a part of the reason they won nine of those 11 games. Three earned runs or less 15 times. They're 11-4 and four in those games. So he's been valuable for him, man. Look, four earned runs or less 21 times. So there were six times where he allowed four runs. They were 3-3 three and three in those six games. You heard me say before, when you allow four earned runs or less, you're at least keeping your team in the game. And it shows it right there. You go three and three, that's what keeping your team in the game is. Now, you have to pitch better than that most of the time. And I feel like he did, like I said, 15 times with three earned runs or less. He's only allowed five earned runs or more four times this season. No more than six earned runs in any start. And that is actually a good job on the season of not blowing up too much. I mean, you compare... Look, Francisco Liriano, he allowed five or more earned runs four times and a lot of season high of seven, actually. So Locke actually compares to Liriano in the fact that they, they, they've they had four games where they did not keep their team in the game, where you could say it was directly on them that they lost that game. And I'll take four times throughout the season from Locke just not giving you a chance to win while the other 21 starts, he did give you a chance to win. He had a season high of eight Ks on June 17th at the Chicago White Sox. In five starts in June, he had a 296 ERA, and then he followed that up with a 326 ERA in five starts in July. So there's a 10 start stretch where he's pitching like, well, really a number two pitcher, although I wouldn't consider him that at any point. His best start, July 4th versus Cleveland, eight innings pitch, two hits, no earned runs, no walks, and six Ks. And that was just in 89 pitches. He could have definitely went the full game if they let him, and that was a one nothing win. Look at this. A 362 ERA and 14 home starts. The Bucks went 9-5 and five in those games. So he pitched very well at home this season too. The problem was going on the road. He couldn't take that success on the road with him. A 561 ERA and 10 road starts. And actually that game against Miami took that EAR up. It was below 6 actually until that game in Miami. But he went 6 innings or more 11 times. I'd like to see that go up a little bit. I, I want to see... Out of 25 starts, I'd like to see him do that 13 times, maybe. But there's a couple other things here. Jim, how many earn runs allowed per start do you think he let up this season? 30. There no, you maybe go. like 4 or 5? It's actually 2.8. I mean, his ERA is 446, so in 9 innings, he lets up 4.46 runs. Right. So... You think he never goes nine innings, so it's going to be less than that. It's 2.8, actually, which isn't too bad. Earn runs allowed per start in their 11 team losses, 3.82. Earn runs allowed in per start in the 14 team wins, two earn runs per start. That is not bad at all. And look at this. You can look at the offense as well during his starts. In the games that they lost, the 11 losses when Locke started, the offense scored 2.82 runs per game. In the 14 games that he won, the offense scored 5.14 runs per game. So you can see there's a correlation of winning and losing with, with both the offense and how Jeff Locke pitches in any given game. Now look, if you remove those four starts where you allowed five earned runs or more, which you can't do, I know you can't do that, but if you remove just those four starts, he has a 346 ERA in his other 21 starts this season, and you would take that any time out of a number four starter and even out of a number three starter. And earn runs allowed per game in the other 21 starts, 2.29 runs per game. So he hasn't pitched as bad as you want to believe, although... Look, I have no problem with moving him out of this rotation and give, giving someone else a shot to see if they can pitch any better. And if Send not, him back to Omaha and he doesn't even live there. I don't care. Well, look, they're not 
their rosters are expanding. He's still going to be on the 40-man roster. He's still going to be on the bench. But you do want to give other guys a shot and see if you can build on this rotation moving forward. But here's what I want to say. Now, I haven't heard this anywhere, and it's probably not going to happen. I highly doubt this ha this scenario happens. But look, I say let Jeff Locke make one more start. No matter what he does, that's it. You make one more start, which is scheduled for September 1st, like I said, at Milwaukee. And it's the first game of a three-game series. And like I said, rosters expand that day. But look, versus Milwaukee this season, he's 2-1 and one with a 2.53 ERA, has 21 and a third innings pitched. So he averages over seven innings pitched in those starts. Allowed 19 hits, six earned runs, no home runs, three walks, and 11 Ks. So he pitches well versus Milwaukee. But that's not the only reason I want to pitch him. Right now, it's lined up for Garrett Cole and Francisco Liriano to pitch the second and third games of that series. So you'd have Locke, Cole, Liriano at Milwaukee after this Colorado series. But look, Vance Wardley and Rodimus Lees are options to replace Locke for the fifth spot in this rotation moving forward. Now, Vance Wardley, has, he's made three starts in the minors, a 250 ERA in 18 innings pitched, 15 hits allowed, five earned runs allowed, two home runs, five walks compared to 13 Ks. His last start was on Wednesday. He allowed three earned runs in six innings pitched. Not great, not terrible. But his previous start on the 21st, seven innings pitched, three hits, no earned runs, one walk, and nine Ks. He's actually on the same schedule as Locke and would line up to start September 1st if they decided to remove Locke from this rotation. But I say push him back. Push Worley back one day and let him start after Locke. Then you have Locke, Worley, where you get a look at Worley, and then start Rodimus Lees the next game. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But Lees, 10 starts, 6 of those quality, in 54 innings pitched, 14 earned runs allowed, 20 walks compared to 61 Ks. His last start was way back on August 14th. His last outing was on August 23rd, but he didn't start. Although he did go three innings, one hit, no earned runs, no walks with six Ks. So this guy looks very good in the minors right now. But he had five straight starts of six or more innings pitched from July 19th through the August 8th. So what I'm proposing here is start the three-game series with Locke, Worley, Lees, then you get a look at all of them, and then you can decide which one you want to move forward with before Burnett gets a chance to come back in this rotation. And what that does, they actually start a three-game series at St. Louis on Friday. Now, if you moved Cole and Liriano back and got a look at all three of these pitchers, let Locke have his last start, get a look at Wardley and Lees, then you could line up Cole, Liriano, and Hap to pitch in the St. Louis series. So that's why I want it to happen like that. Listen, I made that up in my mind. It's probably not going to happen, but it makes sense to me. You, Milwaukee's a bad team. Locke pitches well against them. You want to get a look at Worley and Rodimus Lee, so pitch them against Milwaukee, and then you have your three best pitchers to pitch against St. Louis. And Like I said, this could help to get a read on these pitchers before Burnett returns and possibly give them a chance to outperform Morton as well. You never know if... A.J. Burnett comes back, pitches well, then you got Cole, Liriano, Burnett, Hap, maybe Worley or Lees out pitches Morton, and then you could have them as your fifth starter moving down the stretch as well. And then when you move into the playoffs, who knows, maybe Lees outperforms Hap in the end as well. But if Burnett comes back pitching well, I mean, this rotation is going to look very good. If not, you want to get a look at some of these guys, and I see that as a way to do it real quick at the beginning of September versus a bad team. Well, listen, the Pirates are, what, four and a half games behind St. Louis? Yes. All right, so Milwaukee's not a great team. Not taking anything for granted because any team can beat you. If you can win the Milwaukee series not pitching Cole and Liriano, obviously it gives you the best chance to win that St. Louis series with Cole, Liriano, and Hap. They're your three best starters right now. Please believe. And, you know, I know the numbers still add up where the Pirates can catch them, but they have to at least win that series maybe sweep that series because it's still just it's hard to make up four and a half games on a team that is good as the cardinals not saying the pirates can't win the games but you gotta hope that the cardinals lose the games at the same time and the easiest way to catch them is to sweep that series and i think that gives the buccos the best chance of winning the division which is a little closer than it was even a week ago and i agree i mean it 
you, you just don't want to waste, and it's not a waste, but you don't want to waste your best pitchers against a team of Milwaukee's caliber when you have such an important series coming up with St. Louis. Yeah, I mean, if it if it goes how it lined up, lines up right now, it would be Hap starting game one versus St. Louis, Morton starting game two, and Locke start, starting game three, although it probably wouldn't be Locke. It would be Lees, Worley. Yeah, one of those other knows. guys. But A.J. Burnett, he's targeting a mid-September return. We'll have to wait and see how it goes with him. Though, I mean, he said he, his elbow feels better than it has in years. Yeah, I don't. What know. else is he going to say, <laughs> yeah. though? Obviously, he could end up being the four starter. He could end up being the third starter form, or he might be nothing. Who knows? Tell me this: if AJ could come back and win you one playoff game with a dominant performance, and that was his only other time he pitches for the Pirates for the rest of his career, would you take that from that old bastard? Why wouldn't you take it? If you're telling me this guy's going to win you a playoff game, I'll take... If you tell me Locke's going to win a playoff game, I'll start. That ain't going to happen. Well, you never know, man. AJ's going to go out and give a, a performance of a lifetime. He's going to blow his arm out on the last Listen, pitch like the rocket. Jeff Locke isn't going to be in his rotation going into the playoffs, most likely. I mean, things got to happen where they're, Burnett can't come back healthy. Morton got to start pitching worse. Hap got to fall apart. And then maybe you see Locke get back in his rotation somehow. But chances are you've... N- at least nearly seen the last of Jeff Locke. He might I'm make one more start. Already. I don't know. Well, I gave you the numbers, man. You you got to accept that. I, I respect what he did for the Pirates this season. He he gave them a 14-11 and 11 record when he starts. And if you think, man, if you go 14-11 and 11 with each of your starters, you're winning 90 games in a season. Got to respect the condom. <laughs> But look, there's also the possibility, we're not going to get into this, but the possibility that they call up Tyler Glass now. Yeah, I was just wanted to ask you, if they call him up at the 40-man deadline, does that still change his arbitration? And in, in the, Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, see, I didn't it know all that affects was a, it, no matter what. That's dumb. If you could call up anybody, you should be like, it's one freaking month. What they See, something you can do is you can call him up if you leave him down late, like next season. you got to leave him down longer then. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Right. But it's weird. listen, everyone is saying it's not going to happen with Tyler Glass now. It's not going to happen. Listen, he's pitching great in the minor leagues in AAA right now. He's pitching like a beast, okay? And everyone's saying it's not going to happen. But one guy I listened to on ESPN is Eric Carabell. And he actually came out and said, it's guaranteed. The Pirates are going to call up Tyler Glass now as soon as rosters expand here in a couple days. Now, I usually listen to Eric Carabell and say, and take what he says and listen to it, but this time I'm not going to do it. He, I just don't see it from him. I don't see the Pirates making that move r- right now. I, I think they like what they have in their rotation moving forward this season, but who knows? I mean, if Carabell says it, I, I do listen, but I, th- I just think he's wrong on this one. But moving forward, you got Cole, Liriano, Hap, and then if Burnett comes back and pitches well, you got him as a number four, and that, those four starters, that looks good to me heading into the playoffs. But if not, I mean, there's Morton, Worley, Lees, or Glass now to fill out the last couple spots there. Really, like I said, they only need four starters going into the playoffs. So if Burnett is injured and can't come back and pitch well, it, it's going to be one of those other four pitchers. And really, I think the best thing you can do is – let Lees and Worley have a start here at Milwaukee. See which one deserves the fifth spot in this rotation. And like I said, if Burnett comes back healthy and pitches well, who knows? Maybe Lees or Worley can beat out Morton for that fifth spot and just make your pitching staff even stronger. But, I mean, there's a lot of options still available for the Pirates here to fill out this rotation. And, really, I have no clue what they're going to do. They really haven't come out and said anything about what they are going to do with this rotation in September. The only guarantees are Cole, Liriano, and Hap right now. But, like I said, there's a lot of options for those last two spots, and it is going to get better. And Locke is about done in this rotation. But one more start. Give it to him. Bye-bye, Locke. Well, you said you like how I set up the rotation going into St. Louis, so you have Cole Liriano and half right, pitching yeah, against so him. Yeah, so you'll have one more, but so, I just won't watch that game. So that's it. You heard it here first. Jim wants Jeff Locke to start again. Only because <laughs> if he starts against the Cardinals, it's going to be a catastrophe, all right? Well, like I said, if... If he has to he, start he, again, I'd rather him start against Milwaukee. Like I said, if it, it wouldn't go to the Cardinals. I think he's going to be out of this rotation by the time his spot comes up against the Cardinals anyway. So he's not going to be pitching against the Cardinals. Like I said, though, I want Cohen Liriano to pitch a car- against the Cardinals. So Believe pitch it. Locke, pitch Worley, pitch Lees, go sweep Milwaukee with them. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. But that's all we got for you with our Bucko baseball coverage this week. Fans, you could follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You could follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. If you think I don't know anything about baseball, you can hate on me there. You don't have to just hate on me on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash bet the spread. You can keep coming back to the YouTube page. Keep clicking subscribe. We're smartphone friendly. <laughs>